Our next guest, I have known over three years now. Online, our connection was almost instantaneous. I mean, they were so much like me. They were married, supportive wife, they were straight, plus they're gorgeous. Have a super positive vibe and some great style sprinkled in with some undeniable class. She is on Instagram at MeganCD7 and all over the beautiful state of Tennessee and the Southeast United States. The, United, the winner of the 2021 Superlatives Award for most likely to wear 10 pounds of shapewear. Here's Megan. Mm. Have a seat. Thanks. Absolutely. Mm. So what are we drinking today? We are drinking a locally distilled rum. This is from Tennessee mm. Hills. It's a dark roast. It's a coffee liqueur. And it's phenomenal. Awesome. Oh, it's <laughs> Either way. And how long have you known about this drink? About a year when they opened up. Oh, this uh, a brand new year. place. Mm -hmm. Brand new place. And they opened up a new store in my local hometown. And so I tried it as a shot and it was phenomenal. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's very isn't it? coffee, yes. And I don't do coffee, but I like it. All right, let's get to the interview. So, yes, talk about your journey. Here you are, Megan. Okay, Megan, I'm a fashion fem uh, feminine fashion enthusiast. Yes. Um, I'm actually stealing that for the name of the show. Huh? So, um, basically we started out when I was eight years old. Um, it was a game, of course, we played with some friends of the family, and it was uh, their daughters, same age. And it wound up that uh, we were playing something called Transformer, which was but a- But not, not, not that eight no, Transformer. Not that one. No, not <laughs> So we had a large cardboard box that they cut a slot into and they were shoving clothes in. I had to put them on and then do a little dance in front of them. Oh my God, so, that is so fun. <laughs> I know, it's scary for an eight year old boy that has no idea that a little purple bikini came through. And of course I heard them laughing They outside. were giggling, weren't they? <laughs> oh, they were dying. At which point I, put it on and I'm like I rather like the film on this it's right. like it was a very tactile thing and I was like this is amazing mm -hmm. and I liked how I looked in it mm -hmm. and I think I, that was the first you know toe into the door as right. far as um, uh, my journey on that um, did it stick with you over the years or did it, I, it did. go away and come back or it went away for a little bit, and then, of course, when I was about 14, it came back with a vengeance. And, of course, a little bit of a fetish thing. But um, <laughs> eventually, when I was in college, it moved away from a fetish, and it was like, okay, it was more of, this is a good expression of right. And it puts me in a better place mentally, emotionally, spiritually, blah, blah, blah. And that's where it started. How, how long has it been Megan? Did you have that Megan, name always? Full or Megan. is that? Full Megan has been around for about four years now. Okay, okay. I struggled a lot. We struggled a lot with names before. Yeah. It was, we didn't have any idea what they were gonna be and then it just, once it sticks, it sticks, doesn't it? True, it does, <laughs> it does. So, I do know that a lot of people know about Megan. Who in your life doesn't know about Megan? About the only person that don't know that doesn't know about Megan would be my great aunt. Um, you know, she's from the older generation, right? Deep in the baby boomers, and holy cow, they're like she wouldn't under get she wouldn't get it. She just wouldn't understand. Right. You don't want to be the one to push her over the edge. Exactly. That. I've been surprised before. <laughs> There's been a lot of older peoples that are just like they grab onto yes. both arms, but. You don't know, especially if it's family. So, as you've been working through this, when do you let people know? When did your wife know? Right before we got married, we were uh, we were engaged, and basically, do you think that might have been a little late? 
Hmm? Do you think that might have been a little late to tell her? No. No. Because I knew, <laughs> I knew that it was serious at that point. Mm -hmm. And when it gets that serious, it would behoove you to basically let them know and know how important that is in your life. Right. Because you're going to be miserable. Honestly, you're going to be miserable if you hang on to that, you keep it hidden away from your spouse. And if you fight it, then you have to deal with that. And right. it's just, you know, it's not worth the time. I, I know, I know we both to... know so many cross-dressers that go in and out of cross-dressing and they don't tell their wife and it comes in these waves. They buy all these clothes, they have all this passion, and then they throw it all away to be better people. And then it happens again and again and it's heartbreaking. And Agreed. Um, yeah, there's so many of those. I've heard so many of those stories and it's just, it's heartbreaking at this point mm -hmm. because you and I both know that when you get to a point in your life where you don't have to purge, that's when you're living your best life <laughs> and it's a whole lot cheaper right. than having to deal with the body of hole in your wardrobe. And, and, and I, I'll give them, there, there is that initial rush of having that secret and, and indulging in your secret thing, but that's so short-lived. It's so short-lived, and I feel like people just hang on to that rush that they get with that short-lived, and they don't realize if they open up and they talk about it, and they move past that and open up to the people close to them, it can go to different levels beyond that little rush that they get. You're exactly correct. Um, the short, lived rush is just it's you know yeah it's a it's an adrenaline kick yeah it's Boom. a drug all of a sudden <laughs> but also being able to get to the point in your own life where you don't have to hide that that's when your life gets better I mean, I'm a firm believer in that because I've lived that life so I would recommend just going ahead for going to short term stuff play the long game and you're going to be happy so everybody knows about Megan, your work. Yep, How absolutely. are they dealing with that? Positive, negative. Uh, okay, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm an OR nurse. I work in surgery. Um, and basically everybody at work knows about Megan. Um, do you ever show up as Megan? I do not. Okay. Reason being, I'm going to be in scrubs with right. a scrub cap, with a mask. <laughs> the only thing that you would see You're here. You're not supposed to wear perfume or makeup anyway. Exactly. In the OR. Yeah, People don't know part. that. So <laughs> I do sneak in painted nails. Um, so as long as I'm not like actually scrubbing in right. and doing surgery, I can just do this thing. So okay. I go to work like this. And the patients that I see in pre op, they usually have no issue with it. Everybody at work, hey, what color you got on today? <laughs> Check it out, girl. It's right here. At which point, you know, we just, we're living our best life. And it's so much easier when you don't have right. that burden on you. So that's work. What about family? Has there been any negative, positive from family? Okay. Have you wow. inspired other people in your family? Have <laughs> you pushed away other people in your family? Oddly enough, there's been no pushing away. There are some that haven't like fully embraced it, right. and that's perfectly they fine. Don't I don't to. expect them right. to do that. Um, my sister. My sister is the polar opposite of myself. If you don't know me, um, I'm introverted, I'm quiet, um, I'm an observer. I enjoy that a whole lot more than just basically trying to lead the conversation. Um, book smart. Did well, got a good paying job. Uh, generally, the the good guy, and so you don't have to worry about me. And my sister, on the other hand, oh my gosh, love her to death, but she's rough as a cob. <laughs> um, she's got a whole lot of issues that she's dealing with. She's a good woman. She means well, but we're basically as far away from each other mm -hmm. as you can get on a sibling scale. Absolutely. Um, so not a fan of Megan? I was scared most of her. Why? Right. She is a pipe fitter. She's rough, like I said. 
And I had no idea how she was going to react to Megan because at this point I was out on Instagram and just casting it out and we're going to see how it goes. And that was on my, on my mail account. Um, I never heard from my sister, which worried me very, very much. Um, then at Christmas, uh, we got there. She's showing up. She um, is just enjoying the time with the family and she never mentions it once. I know that she had seen it. Mm -hmm. And right before I left, She's like, oh, by the way, I got a gift for you. And so she pulls out a small wrapped present in rainbow paper, I did notice. I looked at her and I was like, oh my God. So I tore it open and opened it up and it was basically my girl name, Megan, on a small chain necklace. And she went, I think it's fitting for you. And you motherfuckers, you're gonna make, you're gonna make me cry too. Jesus Christ. And it, it was so <laughs> And she didn't have to say anything else, but I knew that she accepted it. Right. And that meant more than anything. Because, you know, it's your sister. You're hoping that you get acceptance from her. Yes. Well, I'll have some more of this then. <laughs> so, church. I know you're religious. How, how is, how is cross-dressing fitting into the church world. Oh, wow. Um, again, when I came out on Instagram, of course, I had a lot of people in my church that follow me on my guy account. And it's but you came out on your guy account, yeah, right? Yeah, I most certainly did. And all that's out there for everybody to see. And I found out um, a little bit later with a, a close friend within the ministry. Um, Basically, they said, you got half of Elder Board, that's for you, half of them are against you. So they're talking about you. They are, they are having meetings they about They're having meetings me. about the, the one that could be possibly right. shown the up as a, <laughs> as a female at church. Right. And that's terrifying because... They got from, a plan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's bad enough that it's in church, but I'm also from Tennessee, so that's actually another huge red flag that right. they're hoisting up um, everything has been okay everybody's been very quiet about it mm -hmm. I have had a couple people come up that are also in the congregation and they were very sweet about it they were very supportive so some inspirational oh absolutely absolutely um, do I feel comfortable enough to go as Megan to church right. I don't know it's hard um, Somebody had once said something to the effect of um, all things are permissible, but not everything is profitable or it's acceptable right. at that point. Um, yeah, I would basically be doing it for me. Right. Uh, well, maybe, maybe a little bit for the other people who sometime. might need that little inspiration. I think it would be welcomed by a number of people there. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's going to be a couple of people that are not going to be okay with it. Right. And they might be vocal about it too. So what do you do? <laughs> so it's, it's a juggling act. Yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. Awesome. Well, we'll be looking for those stories. Yes, ma'am. So about a year ago, you had... 20,000 something followers on Instagram? 23,000. 23,000. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not little stuff, people, okay? No. 23,000. You went, I'm not, I'm not, just so everybody knows, when you're a cross dresser on Instagram, you get a lot of cross dressers that have subscribed to your account. You get a lot of trans people. Yes. You get a lot of moms and dads who have kids Absolutely. who are trying to work through this and get information and learn. Correct. And you also get, the creepy guys. You Correct. also get the not creepy guys. Correct. There's, it's everybody. And you went through your account, person by person, account by account, 23 freaking thousand, and you went and pushed out everybody that wasn't in 
your community. Is that is that saying it correct? You're nailing it. Um, so that wound up being almost eighteen thousand followers, which brought me down to almost three thousand followers total. That's pretty crazy, and that that's not a. I'm not sure if you don't know Instagram. It's not easy. You have to go look at an account, see if they have a picture, see if they're real people. It's right. this is this is not just click 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 click. You're gone. This is click. Okay, this person learns that this is an in depth process. Mm -hmm. So that took a lot of time. So you had to have a driving force behind that. First of all, why 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 did you do that? As a fellow crossdresser, you know that you do have a number of fans that follow you and sometimes they like, sometimes they don't, sometimes they comment, sometimes they don't. But there's a large number of guys that follow and they look modish or look weird or they look like they mush the, tel the uh, keyboard on their face and basically came up with random numbers and that was basically their username. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, probably not legit. However, it seemed like there was a lot of people that were like that mm -hmm. and that's not what I'm there for. So My, what are you there for then? I'm there to connect with the cross stretcher community. Yeah. Um, I've come a long way and I'm old and there's a lot of regrets in my life. And basically I want people that are younger than me to have an older voice, an experienced voice that would say, you know what, how about we just live your best life? Don't hide it. Right. And that's what I'm there for. I, I, I just want to give the opportunity for um, for other cross-dressers to move along in their life a little bit quicker if it's, if it's right for them. Because it takes up a lot of time dealing with all that other side of things. Yes, it does. It's DMs all the time. Mm -hmm. It's and comments it's, that are borderline. Do you keep them? Do you get rid of them? Or do you just a block of them? Yeah. Do you, like? <laughs> so in doing your work, you relieved yourself of other work at the same time. And now you're back up to like 10,000? Yeah, 10,400 as of this point. And those are people in the community. About 4,000 of them are people from the community. Of course, the balance of that, no idea. It's probably right. the keyboard on the face. You got to get, get back you know, on there and do the work again. You got to get there again. <laughs> so, but at this point, um, I have decided that, whatever, um, I'm not there for the followers. Right. However, um, I'm, of course, there for the, for the community. But I'm not going to excise them again. That was a lot of work. Okay. So... Um, how do you feel about it now? You're saying you're not going to do it again because it was a lot of work, but do you feel like that was the right thing to do? Or do you feel like maybe I, I, I at, the, at the time I know it was the right thing to do. That's, that's always how things are, but it's always fun to just look back and go. Well, I would probably say that I did it for the right reason um, at the time. At this point, I've kind of come to the thought process that eh, maybe not it's all good it's a kind of a whatever right. it's a app that a lot of people get on and ultimately in my life it only means about that much it right. can be a big influence but it could be as far as the pie goes it's the smallest slice and you know I'm putting a lot more importance on it than I should because it's that small right but you know, it would be better to just go ahead and let things be. Do you think it made your experience on Instagram better at all? Or do you think it I just see much something? Of a change. Really? I didn't see much of a change. The new people that are coming on, you know, you're still getting the weird creepy DMs, you're getting <laughs> the weird pictures that you don't need to be seeing outside of an operating room. Um, so what do y'all operate on? Oh, <laughs> We do, we do urology specialty, okay. which means we see a lot of penises and vaginas. We see a lot of those, okay. but it's not You're big in our community. You, over the past year, have been organizing events of get-togethers. Right. From like six to more people. We're at one right now. Right. There's ten other cross-dressers, well, eight other cross-dressers here with us. 
and my wife. Um, and you're organizing these things. What, what, uh, what's your inspiration for, for, for doing that? I mean, why, why, would, why, why, don't we, why don't we just go to Gender Shake or to, what is it, Keystone or all those other organized events? What, what, what's your inspiration for actually, because this is work. This is work outside of work. This, yeah. this doesn't, what we're doing here doesn't just happen. You have to find a place, you have to negotiate, you have to talk to a ton of, of, of us to make sure all of our schedules are, what, what's your inspiration for going through this process? My inspiration um, basically comes from the day that it came out on Instagram. That was my official coming out. Rule number one was expand your horizons. Find a community of people, get very involved with them, contact them. I mean, there's only so much you can do when you have a phone and you're typing words to somebody on the other side of the planet. Right. I mean, there's only so much you can do. At which point, you've reached your limit. You have to actually go out and meet these people. And fortunately, Sammy Flair, who you've probably seen on one of our previous interviews, <laughs> um, invited me to come to a hockey game with her. And she ended up by the When she was runners. in like Tennessee or? Uh, no, she was in Texas, okay. and she was going to come to Nashville for a stadium game oh, okay. for hockey, and she didn't want to go alone. And so, at which point, she invited a few people just on a whim, and we all said, yeah, and we all came in, and we had the best time. And the community that you feel with other cross-dressers, and you could be just as comfortable as you could be, you could be yourself, and you have no issue, because everybody here understands exactly how you feel right and it's great and you're not and worried about that, that one jackass who's gonna yell at you because there's six of you or ten of you exactly um, a confidence builder absolutely when we walked out of the Titan Stadium in Tennessee in Tennessee in Nashville, Nashville Tennessee, Tennessee we're talking about sorry <laughs> and at which point you had to do foot traffic up over a long footbridge and then through the heart of downtown Nashville to get to some place where somebody with an Uber would pick you up. From here to here was a mile and a half. I was there with four friends and we didn't get heckled once. We were literally shoulder to shoulder with people of all makes, ages, races, whatever. We were all shuffling along like cattle after the game, because that's how you had to get out. And not a single person said anything about our group that was in Nashville. We were all in our girl personas, and if that isn't a confidence booster, I ask you to give me a good, better example of what would be. Um, after we got there and we got picked up by the Uber at God knows 30, whatever it is. Um, I sat back and looked back. I was like, I just walked a mile and a half with a large proportion. Of partially drunk. Of partially drunk <laughs> people, maybe. <laughs> However, a large contingent of people. Right. It's a wide diversity. And for some reason, we were just people. Just people. Just people. And nobody said anything. And, you know, there goes the confidence level. It's rough. And like six months later, you did it again. And then six months later, you did it again. I know. Mm -hmm. And each time, there's new people here who've never done this before. And that's the beauty of it. And they're it. doing it. And they're, they just go out and do it now. And that's right. So they're living their best life. Yes. And it's their first opportunity. So. And you're the catalyst. Just take a deep, take a deep breath. Because, yeah. So I get asked, what's the criteria? A lot of people are, oh my gosh, you're going on a girls weekend. How do I go? And I'm like, okay. Take a deep breath. I'm not organizing. I've just been invited. But this person is the organizer. So I don't know if they're just comfortable talking to me or they just... What's your criteria? What, what kind of people are you looking for to come to these events? Because I've been to a couple mm -hmm. and we're all different kinds of people. Very different. It's a very broad, broad spectrum of people that we have that are showing up for these things. 
and it's weird. So it's one of those things that the criteria is, I gotta like you. Right. I mean, I've got to admire you through your profile and you're like, okay, this person is fascinating to get to know. Cha-ching. Let's go ahead and invite them and see if they'll go. And y'all are showing up. And it's an amazing thing. We get to bring all these people together. We have the Atlanta crew, <laughs> and then we have the Asheville crew. And there are some veterans from both yeah. teams there. And it's like immediate love, immediate community. And if you've never experienced that and you're deep in the closet, and maybe your wife knows, maybe she doesn't, you don't know the beauty of having that kind of community until you actually experience it. And that I'm very fortunate that I have a large enough audience to where I can just say, hey, yeah. if you don't mind, would you consider going to a girls weekend right. and at whatever city and basically they say, yeah, and then it's exciting. And then we get it all planned out as you say, and there's a little bit of work involved. But once we get everything all set up, we get everybody paid, then we get to sit and wait for almost <laughs> three months, <laughs> anticipating the anticipation level starting here. And you know, the week before, and then two days before, and the anticipation is just like through the roof. And that's the kind of community that I'm wanting to encourage. Yeah. And it's the kind of community we need. For some reasons. It's, it's, so, it's so hard to find at a local level yeah. the people. We're, yes. we're, not, we're not that, there's not enough people. I know they're there. Trust, I know they're there. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is they're not to that level of being able to interact or to be honest with themselves. And I think that this is, this is a, an awesome, awesome chance to be able to do that. Thank you. It's, Thank you. Where's the next one? When is it? You know what? I am living so much in the moment right now. I'm living so much in the moment that I haven't exactly got that to that point yet. We start thinking about it maybe about a couple weeks out. Okay. So at this point, no idea. All right. It's just I'll out in the that. ether somewhere. I'll take that. I'll take that. All right. So that's the bulk of the interview. Now we're going to move on to the last three. What would you ask a person who doesn't like people that challenge gender norms? What would you ask them? Somebody that doesn't like people like us. Them. I want to ask them why does what I do, which is a small sliver of your day, affect your life? Honestly, how much does it affect your life? If it's a large portion, I want to ask you why you are prioritizing how I present as a big part of your life. <laughs> if it's a small, small portion, at which point I would ask you, why are you putting so much emphasis on it? Right. Because ultimately, it's a small part of your life. And I'm asking, it, it makes no sense to put that much energy, hatred, whatever you want to call it, into that small portion of your life. What would you say to your younger self during a darker hour in your life? I would say, hey, um, Sam, that's my name, and that's my younger guy's name. I would say, Sam, long story short, things are going to get better. There's going to come a time in it in your life that you don't have any shame, you don't have any regret, you're not suffering anxiety over this at any point from this point on, um, it gets easier. That's what I would tell the little 16-year-old Sam. That's fine with things. Um, I would basically tell him that life gets better with it. Trust people. You know, don't cast your fears upon them, expecting them to return that. Saying, you know, I don't accept this. 
And you're thinking that, not even knowing if they'll say that. Without any expense, I would be, I would probably be like the retro queen of forever. Well, oh my, I, I, I lose my mind when I see, they've got me targeted on Instagram right. and all these things. I get these little ads. It's not just the beautiful dress from the 50s or 60s. It's the shoes, it's the handbag, it's, it's all that, yes. Yeah. It's, I, I love the coordinated, I love the, right now we're, you know, we're, Always on a budget. I always say we thrift a lot. We mm -hmm. buy a little. Yeah. Um, and it lets us, and it lets us have fun, and it keeps it fun because down in Florida, all these old people are getting rid of all these really cool outfits and stuff. So it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's so hard to get everything lined up with the shoes and the purse. I would just love to be able to get the whole outfits and the whole sets. And the, yeah, that, that 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 that's my that's my that's my that's my genre. That's that's where I'd like to be. I can totally see you doing that. You just do like a little updo thing. Oh my god. Oh, if I can do things with my hair. Oh my god. I can just imagine. I can, I can totally see you doing that. I can see you doing that. I was kind of quietly hoping you would do the goth girl kind of thing. I do like the goth girl thing, but I'm old. Yeah. I'm wrinkly. I'm and, it's, and it's just, it's just, it's pushing too, it's pushing too hard. Like I, I feel like I could fit into the other one without working too hard. It's like it's, it's like it's like my one outfit and my gray wig. Whenever I need to do something hard in my life, mm -hmm. I put that on. And, oh, it's easy. Makes it easy. Makes it much easier. Well, thank you very much for thank coming to talk with us, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. And this was wow. And this was Megan. <laughs> Megan. And Megan CD7 on Instagram. And if you want to do a girls' weekend, be a good person and talk to her. <laughs> be nice to Megan. <laughs>